Hello and welcome to the Raptors Reaction Podcast. I'm Samson Folk, and if you're wondering why it's not William Liu, he's moved on to Yahoo Sports and he'll be covering the Raptors over there. So thanks to Will and Zarar for handing the podcast over to me and I'll be doing the weeklies and I'll be doing the reaction podcast for the rest of the season, hopefully going forward. So the Raptors just beat the Knicks by a whopping 36 points, 128 to 92 they played a really strong game. They were up by almost 40 at one point. They, the Knicks, who are not a very good team, obviously, everybody knows this, but the Raptors displayed a lot of chemistry, a lot of synergy that we've been looking for for a long time. And on top of that, Kawhi Leonard, Serge Ibaka were both out for this game, so Marc Gasol started. And we saw a lot of chemistry from Gasol, Van Fleet, and Lowry. And Van Vliet was inserted in the starting lineup as well. Um, Van Vliet was an incredibly important piece in this game. He he spaced the floor a lot on offense. He also he played pests like defense. He was everywhere on the court. He was flipping outlet passes to Siakam. He was finding everybody in their spots, which is something we haven't seen all the time from him this year. He was actually an effective pick-and-roll ball handler when he was um, looking for Gasol on the roll, which is something we wanted Van Vliet to find Valanciunas on the roll more often this year. We wanted Van Vliet to find Serge Ibaka on the roll more often this year. And in this game, he made the roll man extremely potent with how, um, I guess, perceptive he was when he was going downhill. So that's great to see from Van Vliet. And I mean, him and Lowry, when they play together, it's kind of like perfect. You see Lowry and Van Vliet bouncing off of each other. Reminds me of when, you know, Golden State brought in Jared Jack to play next to Curry. And Curry got to start playing off ball. He became way more dangerous the way he was running around screens. Kyle Lowry has a very big burden of creation for a great deal of the season. Or has had, sorry. And to have Van Vliet come in and just supplement his offense... And then you see like Kyle Lowry was banging in triples all game. Van Vliet is a huge part of that. Obviously, Siakam, Gasol, these guys help create as well. But Van Vliet, just, he opened up a big part of Lowry's game in this one. And he was, it was, it was really nice to see. Um, obviously, Gasol and Van Vliet showed some good um, chemistry as well. That was really encouraging, really rewarding, considering Van Vliet was injured as soon as Gasol came in. And so we were just seeing Lynn with Gasol or Lowry with Gasol, but not Van Vliet. And the early returns so far have been really, really great to watch. And as far as, like, those guys started off the game really well, came out, punched the Knicks in the face, and the Knicks, they didn't have much of a response, like, at all. And so um, the rest of the first quarter was kind of, you know, is laissez-faire. Both teams played pretty good offense. The Raptors obviously playing much better. Um, There's kind of a muck up by Norman Powell on the baseline where he traveled inbounding the ball. And then Alonzo Trier hit a a double clutch three to close out the first quarter. And that was good, you know, good and horrible. (laughs) Um, But Powell had a good game as well. He played super strong. Uh, DeAndre Jordan played really, really lackadaisical defense. And Powell has been struggling with navigating help side defense for the larger part of his career. So the fact that DeAndre Jordan wasn't offering any of it in this game was was great for Powell. I mean, he uh, <laughs> he, he went to the rim often, and he, he got a lot of buckets there. And so it was really encouraging to see him, even though, disclaimer, it was against the Knicks, it was really encouraging to see him attack and be rewarded and not get blocked at the rim not have these awkward you know stuck in the air and help side defense is coming over to swat him type of um type of situations and yeah it was really rewarding to see him do that and the first half as far as like the value of watching it was really high it was a really fun first half to watch um og ananobi also played really well he did a great job. I mean, he missed all of his early three-pointers, but he was really active on defense, and we even got to see him at center for 
like two possessions. One of them ended up being the tree or three pointer, uh, the double clutch one. But it, it's it's very exciting to see OG Ananobi excel on defense at the big man positions because that's something he struggled with for a long time and for good reason. I mean, it's tough for him to just walk into those bigger positions and ask him like, hey, you need to lock these big guys down. Even Siakam struggles with it from time to time. And Siakam is a bigger guy than OG. Not in his thighs, but in his overall body. <laughs> you know, he's a taller guy. He's a longer guy. And he has trouble sometimes too. And so to see OG come in and play meaningful defense at that position. And also that OG was finding, um, was filling the lane on offense and was getting layups and was really attacking around the rim. Not off the dribble like... Powell was, but he was attacking the rim off the cut. He was finding the open spots against the Knicks defense, and he was punishing the people who were defending him. I mean, it was a great first half from OG. I really liked what I saw from him. And as far as anybody else in the first half, I guess it was really nice to see Gasol. He was a little bit more aggressive with his own shot. We saw him hit a couple. We've been waiting a while to see Gasol return to, you know, a Memphis-type of offense where he gets shots for himself a little more and hopefully we see that going into the playoffs and in the playoffs as well like he's only averaging nine points a game as um, as a Raptor which is obviously it's not very high and it does make Serge Ibaka look like a better fit in the starting lineup because you know at this point in Lowry's career Lowry is wanting to pass the ball a little more he's not wanting to grind his way to the rim all the time. He's not wanting to dive to the rim all the time. So he's very happy to let Ibaka shoot from mid-range, and I'm sure he'd be happy to let Gasol get a little bit more offense for himself as well. So at the end of the first half, the Raptors were up 19. I mean, it was a great first half. Lots of fun to watch. Everything was going great. Um, The offense was ticking. The Knicks offense was, you know, getting some buckets here and there. But it wasn't like the Raptors' defense was bereft of any intensity. The Raptors came out and they they punched the Knicks in the face. And they they definitely had a half that was worth watching. And they had a half that was worth taking pride in. And then so um, the second half, it started off with Siakam just going nuts. He was He was great. And he hit a triple. And then the very next play, he did a Euro on Mario Hazonia. And, you know, he put him in a dizzy. He almost turned him right around. And it was it was more of the same going into the second half. The Raptors clearly had an advantage in both intensity and talent. Van Vliet looks really fresh. He looks like his lingering back problems are much better. Everything that has been, you know, staying on his body, all the, all the stress looked like it was worked away. He's in terrific shape, man. He looks so sharp. And he's he's a huge boost to the Raptors' chemistry. He's a huge boost to their momentum now. He's a huge boost to their offense and defense. And the Raptors have been having troubles with the bench, especially as of late. I mean, they are 3-4 and four in their last seven. It's not exactly encouraging. But Van Vliet, I mean, he really does fix a lot of the, the problems that are sitting there. He, he alleviates so many of the problems that the bench usually has. I mean, shot creation. Van Vliet isn't perfect, but he's more than adequate. And especially if he's going to keep getting minutes next to Lowry. They're both going to benefit a lot from each other in those roles because they've been doing this for so long. And especially last year, that was what got Van Vliet like the sixth man of the year um, consideration. That was what earned him that acclaim, why he got the third most votes, is because he was deadly when he played with Lowry. That's why we saw Van Vliet closing games last year. And so having that's the story of this game, is just Van Vliet and Lowry, because Lowry wasn't available for the Pistons game. But Van Vliet and Lowry really drove the car in this one. They drove the Raptors to the win, and that's why it's sad that um, Lowry injured his ankle Adrian Wojnarowski, Wodge, for everybody who's aware of him, um, reported that the Raptors don't think his ankle is serious. But what did happen was 
um, Mitchell Robinson came down. It looked like on Lowry's knee, kind of after diving after a loose ball in the middle of the third quarter. And there are some people who I understand the thought process of saying, why is Lowry in the game? I mean, the Raptors were up like 34 at that point. And I do understand it's frustrating, but there was like 18 minutes left in the game and almost nobody pulls their starters at that point. And the Raptors, like on the last podcast I did with Zarrar and Will, you know, Zarrar was urging and suggesting, and a lot of people share his train of thought, I'm sure, but the Raptors need chemistry. They need to work on their synergy. They need to play together. I mean, they haven't been remotely healthy this year. And they brought in, you know, Marcus Gasol as well, Valanciunas, who was a staple of the Raptors for so long, DeLon Wright as well. All these guys went out. And so there's a lot of moving parts, and there needs to be chemistry going forward. And I understand why it's tough to see your star player go down with what looks like a bad injury when you're up 34. I mean, nobody likes seeing that, and it's, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's, it's terrible. But I, I do understand why Nick Nurse had him in. Now, I'm not like going to ride for Nick Nurse. I, Nick Nurse is the coach. He does his best, I'm sure. And, but you, you don't want to see that happen, obviously. It's not something you like to see. On top of that, um, I think the rest of the game was kind of a slog, which is fine. You know, it. I, I'm sure for most of the viewers, you know, you were watching Moreland, you were watching Boucher, and all that, and it, <laughs> it felt kind of, <laughs> it felt kind of like um, a haze. It felt like, you know, you just wanted the game to be over because. Until we knew that Lowry was okay, the rest of the game, being up 30 at that point, felt stupid. Really, really stupid. And especially since it was an assured win. Also, I guess I'll go back into the first half and just say, Danny Green was fantastic. Danny Green is such an important and integral part of this team. I love seeing him play next to Pascal Siakam because sometimes they'll switch on defense and it'll be so Effort, effortlessly seamless and green spaces out the foreign transition for Siakam in such a way that nobody else really can and he just he is really helped make Siakam's vertical game up the floor so much more lethal especially when Lowry's always hitting those massive hit aheads because the defense is running back the, the trailing guys, a lot of times they go unseen. And Danny Green has the, the IQ to attack a defense in transition from behind the line. And Siakam has the vision that he can get out ahead and he can find the open man as they run to him. And him and Green, they have such a terrific synergy in that way. I really like watching them play together. And obviously the Van Vliet, Gasol, and Lowry minutes were great as well. As far as other things, um, I think I want to hit on a new award that will be given out. Um, it's a new addition to the podcast. It's the Mitchell Robinson Award, and it will be given to the opposing team's villain. And uh, just as so, the um, winner of the Mitchell Robinson Award is Mitchell Robinson. So that's terrific and great. Um and among other things, I guess, I have a couple other additions I'd like to add. By the way, guys, um, I'm, I'm just starting this. I'm going to find my voice. Hopefully, these will be really great by the time the playoffs roll around. I hope that the change of voice, the change of tone is, is okay for you guys. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, something I want to talk about. Uh, Henry Ellison had a good finish to the game. I guess I just I remember that I want to talk about it. It's really funny to see players drafted in Siakam's draft, especially in 2016, especially at his position, because I remember I was reading about, listening about, listening to things and reading things about Henry Ellenson, why he should go before Siakam, because Siakam wasn't on anybody's radar, really, besides Masai. And you see guys like that. Bobby Portis, whatever else, or sorry, Bobby Portis was the year before, but
But you see players at the power forward position who you know have no right being higher than Siakam, but they were. And of course, that's how the draft prog like that's how the draft progress works. But it's just funny to look back and see how good Siakam is and how far he's come and what a unique player he is in the game today. And just seeing him really carve out this role in the Raptors offense that is so malleable to whatever is happening at that point in time and how integral he is to the defense. And especially, I think we're going to see it in the playoffs where he's going to be switching. I just, I'm very excited for Siakam and Henry Ellison really put it in perspective for me, seeing him out there with the Knicks after he got drafted by the Pistons, seeing him there and saying like, wow, Siakam was the 27th overall pick and he's here now and he's going to be an all-star next year and he's going to be an all-NBA defender and he's definitely who I would choose over Brandon Ingram. It's, it's just exciting and we're, we're all a bit spoiled, I think, and, and that's okay too. Um, another new award that will be added to the podcast is the Reggie Evans Award. That's um, obviously Reggie Evans in his time with the Raptors just tried so hard all the time. And yeah, he was great for it. So this will be given to the like a hustle award or something. But we're trying to be cute, so we'll name it after Reggie Evans. I'm going to keep a tally over the rest of the season and hopefully for next season as well. We'll keep a tally going forward. There will be a winner at the end of the year. But for this one is Fred Van Vliet. He ran a ton on defense. He ran a ton on offense. He was omnipresent for the Raptors tonight. And I know Lowry's taking charges, and I know that there's a lot of other hustle players, but it's it's Fred Van Vliet for me tonight. And he, he was so much fun to watch. He, like, he was really fun to watch. And he his play transformed the Raptors tonight. And it was just, it was so nice to see. And the final thing, or sorry, not final, but one of the new things as well is the adjective wheel. The adjective wheel will be selected so that the Raptors can be, <laughs> can have an adjective for what's posted in the podcast, um, in the wording of the podcast. So whatever the Raptors were. So if the Raptors were dominant tonight, we're looking at adjectives of dominant. So there's a bunch in here like titillating, mind-bending, dynamic, clinical, scintillating, things of that ilk. And we're going to spin the wheel. It is spinning. And riveting. Riveting is the adjective for the Raptors. So you'll see that reflected in the, <laughs> the title of the post-game podcast. And yeah, so I think that's a good place to end it for tonight. This was my first time hopping on. Hopefully, it'll just keep getting better going forward. And yeah, I'm excited to do this. And thank you so much for listening. This podcast is sponsored by Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger Injury Lawyers, the lawyer insurance companies don't want you to know about. Visit goldfingerlaw.com and get them working for you. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. This has been Samson Folk for Raptors Republic. Raptors win, Knicks lose. Have a blessed day.